four celebrity households are about to throw open the doors to their luxurious homes. But this isn't an exclusive magazine shoot. They volunteered for a radical scheme in a bid to change the lives of some of the most vulnerable members of British society, homeless people. Our home is their home for the time that they're here. Um, and I've got to say, I now feel really freaked out by this. Presenter Annika Rice. I've worked on lots of homeless projects on a much more practical level. And this is a real chance to, you know, get under the skin of it a bit more. Interior designers Colin and Justin. We are homemakers. So as soon as there was something that was about homelessness, something that we could make a difference with, of course we were going to step up and be part of that. Iconic chef Aldo Zilli. My most important issue here is to change someone's life. And Britpop legend Alex James. I'm so up for it. I think it'd be brilliant. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> have agreed to take a homeless person off the streets. Oh, well. All right, now, how's it going? And into their own homes. Do you think I put a bit too much global bar from this? <laughs> Guided by expert advice, they'll have to cope with rough sleepers. I went to stay in bus shelters, subways, abandoned flats. Young offenders. What are you stealing? I've stolen when I was on the streets. This is what I wake up like in the morning. Alcoholics. By not having a beer for breakfast, Jim could die. And neglected orphans. I don't even know if I'm ready for it. Living together for two weeks. Come on! They'll discover if they have what it takes to become mentors. I'm going to be hard with you, but I'm also going to give you a hug. And if they can help create a radical solution to one of Britain's most stubborn social problems. How can it be a valid experience if you then say at the end of two weeks, that's it? I don't want to see this just as two weeks. And those who have everything. See, the bad thing about celebrities, they do it for the cameras. Rebuild the lives of people who have nothing at all. They've got to understand what I've been through. They've got to understand why. It won't happen overnight, this magic plan. It will take months. I have no idea why on earth we're involved in this project other than we wondered if we could make a difference. And this isn't about a television series. This is about him getting off his ass and back into some kind of meaningful life. Oh, the joys of being a war in Bruto. <sighs> mm. need, need to think about this some more. Four celebrity households are preparing for the most challenging fortnight in their lives. We've got a new person coming to stay with us. They know almost nothing about the homeless person who's about to walk through their door. So that now waits until we know who's coming. And four carefully selected homeless people from across Britain... Long Corn doesn't compare to this. ...have just been given an address. So I'm on my way around now. Is, is this too much? Am I overreacting by thinking that we should clear that drawer? Yes. I really feel nervous because I know nothing about what the project will unravel for me. We're making a lot of assumptions here, Colin. We're I don't know if that's necessarily fair. We don't know anything about our guest other than the fact that they're human. Hi. I've been feeling a bit apprehensive because it's not just me. I've got Nikki, I've got my children. I'm exposing my family to the, to the world. For a long time, I've wanted to become a mentor. <sighs> I think we're all really looking forward to seeing this person. You don't normally go along to some homeless person and say, come home, I want to look after you or whatever. To be able to do that, it's a great privilege, actually. So there's a certain, um, you know, sense of real adventure and where, where will this go? To ensure the welfare of everyone involved, this radical project is being managed by Ed Titherley director of one of the UK's most groundbreaking homeless charities. I speak to my colleagues all the time about really stretching the horizons of the people we work with, so... I'm really excited. This is unprecedented, using celebrities as a lever to get really vulnerable, really marginalised people looking at moving away from the streets, moving away from their situation. The project is backed by support workers of the homeless people taking part and is influenced by well-established supported lodging schemes which have helped improve the lives of thousands of homeless people. Hello. Hello. Hi. Cheers. Alex lives with his wife and five children on a 200-acre organic farm which he's renovating in the Cotswolds. For the next two weeks and beyond, they and everyone else involved will be supported by the resources of Edge Charity and carefully monitored by psychologists and production staff. My idea of hell is becoming a, a sort of spokesperson for homeless people. I'm not... That's, like, not... 
not what I'm not, I don't want to don't want to I don't want to do that. I'm, well, it's yeah. not about being a spokesman. What we're actually trying Great. to do is just sort a homeless person out, basically. Yeah, no, totally. And, and that good. would obviously require a bit of TLC, understanding, listening, empathising. No, nah, no, I'm not a counsellor, man. I'm not. A, I'm no. not a counsellor. That, that's not what. That's not what I do. So, what's your plan? It's just like, I have room, I could use another pair of hands for a couple of weeks, so, you know, don't send me a mental. I can't, I've got enough mentals here already. That's not a farm, that's an estate. 18-year-old <laughs> Danny Newton remembers his parents splitting up when he was just six. Hello. Hello. All right, Alex. Hello, Daniel. <laughs> All right, Daniel. Cheers, welcome. Come in. Family life slowly disintegrated, and four months ago, after constant arguments at home, Danny ran away. From there, I went to stay in bus shelters, subways, abandoned flats, basically wherever was dry. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, you know, I'm fucking busy. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to be there all the time for yeah, you. No. Have you got any training? Have you got I'm any? I'm a qualified bricklayer. Really? Yeah. I've been to college. <laughs> Come here. Neil, what do we need right now? A bricky. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, mate. Neil, can you work with this rubble? Um. I can do my best. Alex's aim is to give Danny the chance to earn enough money for a deposit so that he can rent a flat of his own. If he wants to get back on his feet, let's just try and get him back on his feet, you know? But while his plan can get started straight away, Alex's new employee already has a problem. I feel so embarrassed because I haven't got a clue what Alex does or... You know Blair? Yeah, I know Blair. Pop grip. He was a bass guitarist at Blair. Yeah, he was a bass guitarist, yeah. right. Not yeah. a problem. In all honesty, I will admit, I didn't know what you did at first. <laughs> You're like an everyday person. It's fantastic. I've never... Um, very, very rarely met someone as nice as you. Well, you seem very nice too, so, you know, good to have you here, man. Great. Um, cheers. Good. Well, so, yeah, well, so let's... We'll just try and get that going, yeah? Thank you. <laughs> All right. I feel a little bit embarrassed now, actually, because like, I'm, I'm a little bit stinky. 34-year-old <laughs> Jim Gilrain has arrived in one of the most expensive areas of Glasgow. Ah, what the hell? What can he, what, what can he do about it? Let's just go try it out and see how it works out. Colin and Justin have spent the past five years renovating their five-storey Georgian townhouse. Hello, man. All right, uh, how's it going? Good, Justin. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. Hi there. Uh, how's it going? Colin. What's your right, name? Colin Justin. Yeah, indeed. Oh, uh, yeah, Jim's great. So, this will be your bathroom. Jim left home at 16 and has spent two decades on the streets. So, there's a show in the corner. Sleeping in doorways, abandoned buildings, and car parks. And this will be your bedroom, Jim. Yeah, it's a bit of a fixer-upper, isn't it? It's <laughs> about work, eh? Yeah. Is there anything about you that we should know? I do like a bit of a drink now and again. We drink. I, 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 I used to be on uh, three bottles of vodka a day. If you had to blame somebody for being homeless, who would you blame? My stepfather. I've had that arm broken, that foot crushed, uh, my knee broken, my leg broken, three broken ribs, strangled, drowned, all the way from five, all the way up to the age of 16. For doing what? For just for being the stepson? Yeah. I could read it in their eyes, like, going, oh, what the fuck have we left in this house? Let in this house. If you know what I mean? Oh, my God, he's so nice. Look, there's this person somewhere, somewhere here. Mm, I hope I'm going the right way. Hello. Oh, hi. hi, how are you? Oh, God, how lovely to see you. What's your name? My name's Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> What's yours? I'm Annie. Nice to meet you, Annie. What's your name? Sam. Nice to meet Sam. I'm Bridget. 23-year-old oh, Bridget Harvey will be staying at Annika's West London house with youngest son Sam, who's still at home, and a community of friends and lodgers. If I'm not so much anxious because this house is sort of a community of people, and we always have so many waifs and strays, Coming and going. Can we just propose a toast Absolutely. to Bridget? Hopefully, if the next two or three days, um, you know, she'll just feel so comfortable with us that then she'll open up and then we can start to really, you know, get to grips with how we can help her. Over the past four months, Bridget has lived alone in a single room at a homeless hostel. I've got my own bedroom and, and bathroom. It's, that's really cool. I weren't expecting that. I've done all this for me and I don't feel like... 
Do I feel special? Like, I don't want to feel like I'm the key thing here, do you know what I mean? What, sorry, is this, is this side of the road? 23-year-old former soldier Bobby Blunden recently lost his place at a homeless hostel. I'm not in it because of celebrity. I'm in it because it's just a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Taken into care at eight years old, Bobby says he was placed unsuccessfully with 12 different foster families before settling with his 13th. Let's go and meet the parents. Hi. Hello. Come in the warm. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Me. Thank you very much. Me, Bobby will be staying in Aldo Zilli's four-bedroom central London townhouse. So you were born in Essex? Yeah. I had a good education, and from there, I went into the army, and that's where I studied to be a chef. Um, really? Yeah. Following a serious injury, Bobby left the army and suffered without its routine. Well, I fell into using cocaine. Were you stealing? I've stolen when I was on the streets to fund my coke habit. Stupid things. Like... Yeah, I've been to jail before, yeah. On any given night in the UK, over a thousand people sleep rough. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Tonight, four of Britain's estimated 800,000 homeless people won't have to spend the night in a hostel or on the streets. I don't know how he can end up, like, not having anywhere to live. He's got everything. He's got a family that matters to him and he loves and love him. Got a beautiful home and he's still got everything to give to everyone. It's fantastic. I hope to do generally care and I hope they're not one of these people that I've spoken to many a times in my entire life and go, yeah, 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 we'll help, blah, 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 this. And then at the end of the day, you're still stuck in the same doorway as the last time. He's clearly not remotely bothered that we're gay, so that's good. I don't feel that I'm going to be stabbed in bed. That's great. So I don't feel even remotely uncomfortable. I hope he'll be comfortable. What are you doing? Dan? It's the celebrity's first morning with a homeless person under their roof. Dan, you there? And 18 year old Danny is late for work. Come on, Dan, I haven't got time for this, son. Come on. Former soldier Bobby's been up since 4 a.m. to watch Aldo appear on breakfast television. <laughs> The welfare of everyone involved is being carefully monitored by a team led by Ed Titherley, director of one of the UK's most pioneering homeless charities. I think it's really important to understand that homelessness is not just about finding a home. There's so many wider issues we'll be dealing with. For the people who go through into celebrities' houses, 
I hope that we actually come up with something that's really different and, and change their lives for the better. It's not about using celebrities to showcase homelessness. This is all about solutions. Jim might be getting used to life at Colin and Justin's. Do you think I put a bit too much bubble bath in this? <laughs> but there are some routines from his life on the streets that he has to stick to. Do you mind if I get a beer? A beer? Yeah. For breakfast? Um, hi. Yeah. But there's, um, there's, there's a cold one in the fridge. Yeah. Hi. No, help yourself. Right. Thank you very much. Despite the dangers of his heavy drinking, two decades of alcohol abuse means that Jim's body can't function without it. Are you hungry? Uh, not particularly. Uh, I've just asked uh, Colin if it's OK if I have a beer. You can have what you want, yeah. Because yeah. I'm feeling a little bit. Yeah, well, listen, let's throw that out. It's strange. You know, I kind of understand this now. By not having a beer for breakfast, Jim could die. That, that's mind-blowing. You've had 18 years of your life being led the way that you lead your life. We don't want to throw your balance completely by saying, you're doing this, you're doing that. Tell us what you want to do, do you know? I will do. I just don't know yet. Let's have fun, do you know? Let's get some laughter into this as well. And if you're bored with us asking questions, tell us to piss off. <laughs> will do. No, just be, just turn up. Just turn up. Turn up to over there where you're supposed to be. It couldn't be simpler, mate. It doesn't get any simpler. Alex is taking a less casual approach with Danny. It's not beyond you. That's why I get angry, because I know, I know it's not beyond you. For the past seven years, Alex's farm has been a crucial escape from the excesses of his rock star past. When I moved here, my best friend was in the Priory. <laughs> People that I knew from back then now, all dead, you know, overdosing and liver failure and... It's a big, throbbing heart, the countryside. You get more than you give, that's for sure. It's been the making of me. Come on, put that down, finish the job. Alex yeah. wants the discipline of farm life to do the same for Danny. Come on, you're not, you're not, you know, work, do the job. Is it a kick up the pants? I think it is. That's what I do with my kids. It's just like, come on! Come on! I still know so little about you. Annika's yet to decide on a plan for 23-year-old Bridget. The first thing I've had to come to terms with as I got older was that my parents were alcoholics. Um, I had to become um, an adult, even though I just turned into a teenager, bossing my sister and brother around, sending them to school. Why were you bossing your elder brother around? Because my mother at the time wasn't around. She walked out on us. Have you ever had any alcoholic problems? No. I mean, I've noticed actually around alcohol this weekend, you're, you're very measured. Mm. What I'm feeling you need is some sort of structure in your life. Yeah. And you're, I've seen how you've just blossomed in the community of this house. Yeah. I think you need to be with... I think you need to be working. The, the one job that does give me that, all of those, is doing the care work. I think I'd like to take her to meet some people locally who work in the voluntary care sector and see if there's something we can put in place. And I want to do it today, you know, seize the moment. It might not be appropriate, but let's go and see if it is. With her parents' alcohol problems, Bridget is no stranger to caring. She began looking after her own family when she was just 11 years old. I don't see a healthy 23-year-old. I see a tired, washed up, drained girl. I see a middle-aged girl that's age so much. I just feel like my whole face is just covered in stress. Can you hold on to this, Rin? That's my the new menu for Dilly Fish. Without a fixed address, finding a job is beyond the reach of most of the UK's homeless. This is where it all happens, this is the engine. Add to that a criminal record, and the task is almost impossible. I've got experience in cooking, but I've never, ever worked in a restaurant like this. Bobby's time in prison and cocaine problems have meant he's had no steady employment oh, since he left the army five years ago. Where's your apron? Aldo is determined to break the cycle. There's a chef in everyone. I'm going to assess Bobby. I'm just going to give him my kitchen, and he can cook me anything he wants. 
and I'm going to taste it and see where he is. It's going to be a hard challenge, but you can't go through your whole life wanting something and then uh, you not expecting to work for it. If I can get this person to start being a cook or even end up with a job at the end of the day, I think I've achieved my goal. You know, I think it's like winning the lottery for me. What we got here, then? Mackerel with honey and mustard. Uh. Oh, that's made me cry. So you've ruined two fillets of mackerel. Yes. At least I know where you are. He's not clearly not um, a good cook, but having said all of that, you know, the boy is very, very key. Oh, well, shit happens. There's a long way to go. There's a long way to go for him, and there's a long way to go for me. In keeping with her community philosophy, I'm sitting very comfortably. Annika's organised voluntary work for Bridget with a local charity. <laughs> so what happens, Tim? Do we go and pick up people? We will, yeah. Fish is a community care scheme that provides support for the elderly in West London. Are you ready for this? No. <laughs> no, neither am I. After her mum left when she was 11, Bridget not only had to care for her brother and sister, but also her terminally ill father. When my dad had cancer, that was my time in one sense where I became the mother and it got to the point of where I couldn't take stress. It's like when you've had like confidence knocked out of you anyway, you're gonna kind of like be a little bit, you know, negative in that terms. But that's something obviously a barrier for me to deal with that I'm hurting and dealing with. It's quite early for Christmas cards, or perhaps it's not, perhaps it's... But what Bridget hasn't told Annika is that a new job and a new home all at once could be too much for her. I'm tired as well, and I'm not feeling 100%, but yet I'm still here, you know? Just got to have a balance, ain't you? Many of them have you had? One, and that much. In Glasgow, there's been no work. Sure. Yeah. What are the things that you'd like to do, whether it's a humdrum thing or an exciting thing? I'd like to get a helicopter ride down the Grand Canyon. Colin and Justin have spent the day finding out as much as they can about Jim. If there was only one thing you could change about the events that led you to today, what would that one thing be? I know exactly the answer. If it could be someone behind me, ma and my da, just so I was getting conceived, spreading my path, so that I don't get conceived and I wouldn't be here at all. Yeah. Don't cry over me, I'm not worth this. I'm going out for a cigarette. project other than we wondered if we could make a difference and I'm all more determined to in some way impact positively in his life. Simple as Absolutely. It's 8am. Well it's brilliant. I'm so glad he got up in time. Um, I've only caught him having a fag once, you know. But while Danny may be on time and where Alex wants him... <laughs> ..Danny's family problems have managed to find him. I'm away for the fortnight to, to, you know, sort myself out, not everyone else. The family rows that caused him to run away from home in the first place 
are continuing. I left because there was arguments. I left because I wanted to, and I can't take it anymore. Not putting up with it. Don't need to. Ignorance is bliss, but not the way to solve problems. Need you over here, mate. Danny hasn't let Alex know about the continuing trouble at home. He still hasn't really grasped it. I mean, you'd think being homeless would be enough of a reality check to make you want to, like, struggle to improve your circumstances. How many people are there on the streets who would jump at a chance to do it? To disgrace the homeless people. <laughs> Isn't he? Stuff back home? Yep. I'm getting torn down and fucking building myself back up and getting ripped up even more. It's pissing me off. Colin and Justin have brought Jim to a country house just outside Glasgow. Who's this guy? But they're not here to look at interiors. This ain't for me, is it? What do you, want? <laughs> <laughs> you said to us the other day that it was a dream of yours to fly over the Grand Canyon. We can certainly sort the helicopter part out. Oh wow! <laughs> You're giggling like a little schoolboy. <laughs> <laughs> look at that wee face. <laughs> I guess there'll be people who will watch the helicopter flight and think, wouldn't it have been better to be, you know, hammering the phones and knocking down doors and trying to hassle people to rehouse Jim? We don't want to just be his latest housing officers. You know, it is all about having things in there, positive things in your mind that just reinforce your drive to think, there's another life out there, I can change this. Jim, is there somewhere in particular that you'd like us to hover over if the captain can do it? This is so much bigger than anything that we've done before. It's about making that guy feel that there is a life to lead. Beeping like a baby. <laughs> You're crying. I'm not crying. You bloody well are still crying, sir.
The celebrity mentors and their guests are halfway through their first week together. Oh, look. And Ed has travelled to Glasgow to visit Colin and Justin. There's a real balance here between developing a relationship and just my urge, which is let's, let's push on, let's look at the alcohol use. We've got this finite period, we've got this window, and what can we do to change someone's life? We're trying to get them off the streets for good. Oh, morning, hey, Ed. Hey, morning, how are you? Fine. Good to see you again. Four months ago, Jim says he was diagnosed with severe liver damage. The whole premise of what we're doing is using you guys as the catalyst, as the spark, to bring about some, some revolutionary positive change for, for Jim. And, and I think, even with the alcohol, I think that's your role. It's about motivation, it's about inspiring him to say, yes, I can actually do something about my alcohol use. And one thing I've lined up already is a medical appointment. So if the doctor recommends, you know, that he actually does have to um, dramatically limit his alcohol intake, how will that work? But if they advise that actually that we need a really structured process of decreasing the alcohol intake, then I'd be really pleased if you took an active part to, to mentor Jim through it. I'm really keen to hear, hopefully, good news about his liver. I hope we can start to use that as a way to talk to Jim about his drinking and whether he might be willing to reduce it. Yeah, I know. Right, no problem. For Danny, the phone calls keep on coming and he's had to let Alex know. I'm going to leave it for now. Let things cool down. Yeah, just let it all calm down, baby. You know, just, just, just don't worry just, about anything. Just, you know, just... I don't want him to sort of fall into introspective contemplation and self-pity. I think we could spend two... We could easily spend two weeks talking about his problems and get nowhere. There's a family here. You know, you look after each other, don't you? I've got the fucking crappiest cutter in the world. Sitting here pulling it fucking apart myself. Having failed to impress with his cooking skills, ex squaddy Bobby's work experience with Aldo will now be as a commie chef. A commie chef is pretty much the beginning of your chef's life. It's a step up from being a kitchen porter. Kitchen porter, you wash dishes. Do you know what kitchen porter is? <laughs> the next few days, I like to be on the fucking firing line, not cutting carrots. So that's Bridget own. spent the morning painting. When you do things like a nose. With Annika's artist friend, Tim Hall, in the studio at her home. The one thing I found about painting, drawing, anything like that, it absolutely takes you into your zone. If you've got problems in your head, they really do go because you become so intent on what you're looking at. So it is a great antidote to stress and problems you might have in your life. I am enjoying myself, yeah. and it's nice to enjoy yeah. myself because that's who I am. So you know, I'm not all eyes, about being so manic depressive brows, and all that lot. <laughs> you know, yeah, holding my head up high, a lot of motivation, which I'm getting from obviously living with Annika and her family. I'm loving what I'm doing at the moment. I'm loving what I'm seeing at the moment. It's, it's just a great journey to be on. But the journey Annika's planned for Bridget also has another direction. Bridge, it's half past 12, at 2. You've got your next shift at the community centre. I think work is important, and it's just what everyone around you does, and it just gives you a sense of being part of the world. If you're in the right team, in the right job for you, it'll make you feel valued, and people are depending on her, instead of her always depending on other people. You know, it's all starting to switch around. Oh dear, I think that was OK. I think Bridget was a bit disappointed because she just wants to paint now, but I think she has to. You know, this is the start of her commitment to work and getting herself back together again. What have I got myself into these two weeks? I don't fucking know. How are you, anyway? Good, good. Better than me, then. Obviously, we're concerned about getting people back home safely. Yeah. Uh, and it would be really, really helpful if you could be on the bus. Okay. And then now next week, mm -hmm. uh, would you be able to meet the bus like you did on the uh, on Tuesday? So meet them on Monday at 9 o'clock. Right. Okay. Okay? Already finding the demands of filming a lot to cope with, a simple change in schedule raises old issues for Bridget. I need to know where I'm at. Cos I panic. I have panic attacks and I suffer with anxiety, so it's, it, do you know what I mean? I have to deal with me first, with how I'm going to deal with it. There's obviously like shit going on, bombs going yeah. off in the background, right? Just don't put, just like, just, 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 just leave all that behind, mind. right? You're here, you're safe, let's get you on your feet, okay? Cos you're a very capable, very intelligent person, okay? So tell that instantly. 
So there's no reason why you should be up shit creek. Yeah. yeah. 18 years old. Alex is worried that Danny's ongoing family rows could derail his plans to help him. So I just imagine his little heart's racing and his mind's racing and he doesn't know what the fuck's going to happen next. We'll see. It's not very long, two weeks. I don't know, I'll sleep on it, I think. Hello. Hello. How was it? it? It was good. Yeah. It's it's just like yeah. I, I, I kind of did have a little bit of a panic attack. Okay. Well, come so, in and tell me about that okay. when you've had your cigarette. I'll okay. put the kettle on, okay? Finish that. Thank you. I'll put the kettle on. Thank you. Mm. So that's obviously what happens to Bridge, you know, when she feels rushed or stressed or anything like that. Because I know, like, if, if I'd been there, she'd have been absolutely fine. I was so desperate to go along and peek through the window, but I just wanted you to do it on your own. No, that's understandable. You, but I don't don't get me wrong, it. I was thinking to myself, yeah. no, I need to do this myself. Mm. I can't rely on other people. No, but what you can do, if that happens again, you can call me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like, feel like I'm failing like you not, because you're supporting me and you're making you're not, this happen. You're, it's just you're like, so not failing me. You know, we're, we're going we're gonna to move you on. <sighs> yeah. need, need to think about this some more. Today's a really important day for Jim because he's, by his own admission, got 10% liver function as a consequence of his alcohol intake. And he's cut right down since the last time he had a test done, so we wonder what the difference is going to be. Going by these results, you're probably very lucky that more damage doesn't seem to have been done to your liver. I would reckon that that's about 50, 60%. How do you feel, Jim? It's good to have uh, at least about half of it left now, rather than 10% of it left. Would it make sense for us to, to keep a little logbook of how much Jim Absolutely. has every day and then see if we can encourage Jim to reduce over the next two weeks that he's with us? Yep. And it's probably not realistic to say that it will be an uneventful journey. Yep. But there's certainly nothing to say that you won't come out at the other end. Mm. I'll try and cut down on drinking, but it might fluctuate up and down for a little while. You're going to stop drinking completely at some point. Hopefully. Never say never to an alcoholic. Oh, Dan, what milk do you have in your tea? Skimmed or semi-skimmed? Semi-skimmed. In London, Aldo wants to reassure Bobby that work experience as a commie chef could be just the beginning. When I was 25, at 26, I had my first restaurant. Does that look? You know, Does that and I was homeless like you. When I was 17, how was it you became homeless? Went to find fame and fortune, basically. That's what I thought I was going to do. And ended up in no money in a, in a big town in Germany and very hungry. And uh, no roof on my head. So I know where you've been. That's why I've taken this challenge, to be honest, because I want to help. I want to give something back. But you've got to help me first. I'm going to be hard with you, but I'm also going to give you a hug. Thank you. All right? Yeah. We're going to do it together. We will. Yeah. Good boy. On Alex's advice, Danny is trying to focus on work rather than the phone calls from home. I think he wants me to work hard so that I can prove to myself and prove to everyone else that I can do it. You know, I'll work for what I'm doing. It's like landing an aeroplane, just looking right in the distance. And he's got something to aim for, you know, he just needs to keep focused on that. But I do think he's changing. I mean, it's been a struggle. I suppose there's a danger it could have broken him, but I really do think it's making him better. I like the kid. And I like him more and more. I'm sure you do too. You know, it's just like just seeing somebody win a little bit is, uh, it's wonderful. That's brilliant, because in here we've got one, two, three of the heavy beers and one of the light beer. So you've really only had three and a half today. 
After visiting the doctor, Jim's agreed to keep a record of everything he drinks. That's it. Don't think of anything else apart from how well you've done. Thank you very much. And I kind of expected he would want a big can of beer before going to bed. He said, I don't want any. What he's doing is actually incredible. It's very early, so we don't want to walk before we can run. Well, do you know what? Fine, I think that's fantastic. You know, you go to bed thinking about that. Honestly, he's done incredibly well. Back on the farm, there's a problem. Danny has revealed to the production team that he's been hearing voices telling him to harm himself and others. It basically means I hear voices constantly, you know. It's the easiest way to explain it. It's like you sitting there, having one person next to you saying complete and utter junk that makes no sense. Another person sat on the other side of you saying into your ear a load of insults that are really winding you up by having somebody in front of you, right? Having a proper conversation and trying to focus on the person in front of you and just put them two to the back of your mind. It does come times that I'll, I'll sit there and I'll turn around and I'll go, what? And nobody will have said anything, nobody will be there. Danny's kept this a secret, but the revelation could now throw his future on the project into doubt. It's going to freak so many people out. Right? And it's going to make people hate me and think I'm a freak, think I'm a weirdo, think I'm some kind of nut job. Having cut down his drinking yesterday, Jim is paying the price. It's not good, is it? <laughs> don't do drugs, don't do alcohol. It's got no drink in the system. Come drink with me for three months constantly, right? Every day from morning to night, and then stop. And see how you feel. <laughs> Start here. I'm not gonna stop drinking with him for two weeks. It's the season of love and understanding. Merry Christmas, everyone. And many of you are here today. Despite Colin and Justin's efforts, Jim's drinking is once again on the rise. <laughs> oh, I'm on six. Six? So we've peaked. I don't want to wake up like I did this morning. That's quite high, though, isn't it? I told you this chat is not going to change my life. I, feel, I do feel a bit like at school. I'm expecting gold stars, silver stars, bronze stars. Do you know what I mean? I've got to say I feel a bit stressed now because yesterday, maybe, maybe yesterday was too good to be true. I'm an alcoholic. I constantly think about beer. 
like a smackhead, a heroin addict, I should say, will constantly think about the next fix. It won't happen overnight in the space of 10 days, this magic plan what been going on. It will take months. Before Danny even arrived, Ed and Alex's relationship got off to an uncertain start. It's about to be tested even further. Yesterday I got a call from the film crew. They'd just spoken with Danny and he told them that um, he'd been hearing voices in his mind and they'd been suggesting he harmed himself, derogatory comments about others. Immediately we called up a psychologist it sounds like early onset schizophrenia. He's had it ongoing for four years now. We don't think there's any risk at all. Although Alex saw the psychologist visiting Danny last night and suspects there's a problem, Ed first needs to get Danny's permission before revealing the provisional diagnosis to his mentor. The reason I didn't mention it is because I am ashamed because I had people going absolutely nuts thinking I was a complete nut, you know, fruitcake. Sure. So I just turned around and said, oh no, it's not happening anymore. I have to obviously brace this with Alex. He needs to know. I'm hoping he's composed about it. I'm, but I'm hoping he doesn't freak out on us things like that, because that's most people's reaction to things like that. Alex is a dad and he's got a big family, and I've got to somehow try and reassure him that there's no threat to them at all. If Alex turns around and tells Danny to leave, that's the worst possible scenario. But Alex's reaction in about one minute's time is really important. Uh, I'm really doing a lot of resources at this, OK? Are you here to help me? Or are you here to just piss around, right? I'm, I'm every ounce of my mental strength, I'm focusing at this. I've got six other things going on, OK? It's a lot of time, it's a lot of money. I'm trying to make it happen. Are you, are you, are you arriving with some stupid bullshit false jeopardy for, te for television? This isn't about a television series. This is about him getting off his arse and back into some kind of meaningful life. Yesterday, Danny turned around and said to someone on the crew, actually, I hear voices and they make me do derogatory things to myself and to other people. So I heard that and immediately I called up a psychologist who came here last night. They did a diagnosis and it's a preliminary diagnosis that he has some uh, propensity towards psychotic episodes and indeed it could be very yeah, yeah. early onset schizophrenia. Yeah, 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 yeah. well, we yeah, you know, we, spot, we spotted that, yeah. Cool, that's what I've That's why say. I think he needs tasks. He needs tasks, he needs to accomplish things. Uh, to be okay. honest, I completely agree. And I'm so, but I think I've got to tell you that because as you rightly say, family, children, etc. But I absolutely I don't you. trust you, mate. Go away. Go away. Just to go away. This is not contrived in any way. I'll, I'll leave you alone. I'm sorry if this has caused you any stress. Alex is furious that he wasn't told about Danny's situation last night. Copy me, it'll be all right. <laughs> Copy you, I'll be all right. I'll yeah. turn out all right. The first week of mentoring is almost over. He's got the passion for cooking inside him. He's just getting it out because he's got so many other issues to deal with. After learning that Aldo has also been homeless, Bobby's inspired to have something to aim for. Aldo's had the same things happen to him, but he's succeeded where I failed. Well, it's made me feel kind of optimistic, really. Very decent bit of pasta, that. Everyone involved is beginning to understand the scale of the challenge ahead. I think on the surface, people might think, oh, she's fine. And, you know, I might well have thought the same thing, but unless you've been completely homeless, unless you've watched your mother walk down the street when you're age 12 and turn her back on you, you can't really get that fear and that depression. I can tell that there's borderline mental health problems there. But the way to deal with that is, is, is to just, just it, until, it's a, until it's a problem, we don't need to deal with it, I think. I tell you, if you've been through what he's been through, you'd be f feeling pretty strange. OK, well, do you want to get Ed back in? 
Right, so here's okay. how I think you can help me, right? First thing we need to nail is the flat, otherwise he's yeah. back out on his arse uh, a week on Thursday. So, yeah. you know, it's like, let's just gra let's grab one of those. You're going to look into what kind of on... I mean, even if he's not being a heavy-duty psychologist, he needs some kind of counselling. If I come up with a few options... If you could do that, the Delta That's what my role tomorrow, is. That would my be role utterly is not, amazing. My role okay. is not to provide contrived telly. My role is to support okay, you. OK, good. To give them right. a solution that we all walk away and okay. we go, Brilliant. Danny's life has changed for the better, and that's that's the outcome we want, and that's what my role is. OK, um, I trust you now. Good. Cheers, Alex. Thank you. Have a good day. Alex cares about the project. Alex cares about Danny. We've got what I came for. I wanted Alex to listen and to understand that I had to tell him, but above all, I want him to keep focusing on Danny, and he's got it. So we're trying to sort Danny out, and we're trying to set him up for life. Beauty is actually in the wheelbarrow. It's the first time I've looked at him and like a dragon, steam coming out of his mouth. What? There's a lot of things he's still not telling me. Imagine all night here. He never told me this, but I signed up for it. Oh my God, oh my God. This is literally the last place that I've seen my mum. How are you feeling? We can share. I could hear my dad screaming at my mum. Jim's the person who's at the centre of this storm. No, I'm not Case. I'm just the same as everyone else. I don't know how long you would have survived. Because I just didn't want to live anymore. You upset me. I don't like it. I'm just trying to think of why I'm brutal. Get a place, get a job, start a little family, and have a proper life.